During World War II, civilians in bombed-out cities like London, Warsaw and Berlin learned that the greatest threat wasn't always the blast outside, it was the shockwave inside. Doors, windows and walls that weren't properly reinforced could turn into deadly hazards, splintering under pressure or collapsing entirely. But out of this chaos came a simple, brutally effective reinforcement method that most modern builders have long forgotten. What makes it fascinating is that it required no special materials, no advanced engineering, just a smart use of geometry, pressure redirection, and a deep understanding of how structures fail under stress. And that's exactly what we're uncovering today, the World War II door reinforcement trick that modern builders ignore. During the Blitz, families quickly realised that a standard door frame offered no real protection against the concussive force of nearby blasts. Many homes suffered catastrophic interior damage not from direct hits, but from the implosion of doors blown inward. In response, civil defence engineers and carpenters developed a reinforcement system known at the time as diagonal bracing under compression. It was a concept borrowed from military field fortifications and adapted for urban homes. The idea was brutally simple. Redistribute impact force away from the hinges and lock area, the door's weakest points, and spread it through an improvised triangular load path using wood or metal strips. The method worked like this. A standard wooden door instead of relying solely on vertical styles and horizontal rails, was reinforced with diagonal beams fitted tightly from the bottom hinge corner up to the opposite upper corner on the latch side. This bracing turned the door into a rigid triangle, the strongest geometric shape in structural engineering. It resisted bending, twisting and collapsing even when nearby explosions caused shockwaves. This diagonal brace transformed the door from a swinging panel into a mini-barricade that could take and absorb punishment far beyond its weight class. It's no coincidence that modern military bunkers still use variations of this principle. In reinforced doors built for blast shelters or secure compounds, diagonal and cross-bracing are often hidden within steel cores. Yet today's average home builder skips this entirely, relying on thin pressed panels and hollow cores that crumble under even moderate impact. It's not that we've lost the knowledge, it's that we've prioritised aesthetics, cost and convenience over survivability. But the World War II generation understood something vital. When everything around you starts to fail, structure and angle matter more than style. Now let's talk about how you can apply this knowledge yourself. If you live in a rural area, an off-grid cabin, or even a city home you want more secure, this old trick can give you a surprising edge. Start by checking your main entry door. If it's hollow core, replace it with a solid wood or metal door. Then open it up or reinforce it on the inner side by fitting a diagonal support beam from the lower hinge corner to the upper latch corner. A 2x4, bolted securely, can make an immediate difference. The diagonal must fit snugly under compression. You're not simply attaching it loosely. If you want a more historical nod, use reclaimed oak or chestnut, exactly the kind of wood wartime builders used when resources were scarce, but strength was non-negotiable. For even greater strength, some World War II engineers doubled the system, adding a reverse diagonal from the upper hinge corner to the lower latch side, forming an X across the interior surface. When anchored with steel brackets or carriage bolts, this created a cross-tension 
that resisted both inward and outward forces. During the London Blitz, doors reinforced in this way were documented as still standing after nearby bombs, shattered windows, and collapsed ceilings. That's real evidence of durability, not theory. There's also, you know, a modern survivalist angle to this. In off-grid shelters, storm-prone areas, or conflict zones, this reinforcement trick gives you a quick, affordable way to secure an entry point against both human and natural threats. A reinforced door doesn't just resist shockwaves, it also resists kicks, rams, and even pressure from flood or wind. Many preppers today overlook this, focusing on locks and hinges while ignoring the physics of load distribution. Strength doesn't come from the lock. It comes from how the force travels through the structure. If you want to take it a step further, you can apply the same Second World War principle to door frames. During the war, civil defence manuals recommended reinforcing the frame with angled corner braces, often steel strips cut from scrap material. These were installed at 45-degree angles between the vertical frame and horizontal lintel or threshold. The result was a rigid frame that worked with the door rather than against it, keeping both in alignment under stress. In some of the more advanced setups, engineers added small triangular gussets, essentially mini corner plates, to stop flexing entirely. Even with modern tools, you can replicate all this in an afternoon. The materials are cheap. Just a few beams, steel brackets, screws, and a bit of patience. But what you'll end up with is something that holds historical and practical weight. A door that could withstand more than most modern designs ever could. And you'll have built it the way wartime survivors did. Smartly, efficiently, and with purpose. The forgotten brilliance of this Second World War reinforcement method isn't just about nostalgia. It's about rediscovering design that prioritised survival. Every piece of timber, every bolt, every brace had a reason. It wasn't decorative. It was defensive. Today, when supply chains are fragile and safety is increasingly self-made, revisiting these forgotten engineering principles isn't just interesting. It's necessary. History keeps handing us solutions. It's our job to remember and apply them before they vanish completely. If you've learned something new today, or if you're already thinking about how to retrofit your own door like a wartime engineer, make sure you subscribe to Warfield Survival. Share this video with someone who appreciates the grit and ingenuity of Second World War design. Because history isn't just about what happened. It's about what still works when everything else fails.